House GOP members are kickstarting a weeks-long probe of President Joe Biden's age to keep this question on his mental state in the spotlight. Now, per Axios, according to sources close to the House GOP, doesn't matter what they find, any conversation about Biden's age and mental state will paint the White House in a negative light. House Republicans are planning to seek testimony from special counsel Robert Herr about Biden's reported storage of documents, as well as his mental state. Meanwhile, across the globe, Russian President Vladimir Putin told media there that he'd rather President Biden serve as our country's leader than Trump, surprising some, saying, quote, that he's more experienced, he's predictable, he's an old school politician. A new Reuters Ipsos poll has found that more than half of Americans think President Joe Biden received special treatment when her did not bring forth charges following his classified documents probe of the president. 53 percent of respondents agreed with the statement that Biden received special treatment because he is the U.S. president. All right. I want to touch on both of these things. Yeah. Um, first, the the, uh, the Biden, Robert Hur issue. So there was some additional reporting from NBC News yesterday that was very interesting. It was Biden in that press conference from last Friday um, characterized Robert Hur has, has, as having asked about Bo Biden's death day and and said very kind of very defiantly like how dare you you know how dare you ask me about that according to NBC News who talked to people who are familiar with the conversation that took place they dispute Biden's characterization of that they say Robert Hurd did not specifically bring it up Biden brought it up of his own volition within the conversation and used the wrong date he wasn't like prompted to do it by Robert And do Hurd. we know if it was the wrong so it was the wrong day. The wrong it was year. the wrong year. He got he got the, the right day, day wrong, but the year so, I think the year was off by two or three. So they were discussing this on on Pod Save America, which again is a liberal podcast yeah. from the Obama Obama speechwriters, et cetera. And they brought up, I think, one point, which is a good one, which is that when you're in these dep depositions, you are advised not to speculate. And if you don't know something, there's a, a lot of the like, I do not recall, I do not yes. recall, is not actually a memory issue. It's, you know, if I don't know exactly when something happened, Robbie, if you asked me when we started this, doing the show together, I'd be like, mm, yeah. I do not recall, even though I think it was about March-ish a couple yeah. years ago. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? fair, fair enough. Okay, so that's part of it. But when it comes to a date um, like the death of a loved one, I do think that, you know, many people's experiences is that that seems to ring a little bit more specifically in your head. Now, I almost think that forgetting the year is almost more forgivable or understandable, I should mm -hmm. say, than the day. Um, because, you know, the day comes around every year. There tends to be a lot of anticipatory anxiety about it. And the year, you know, you know, you know when it happened, but years kind of disappear. Sure. In 2020, past 2021. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I would love to know more about those kind of details and how much of yes. the, oh, he's mentally unfit is him just saying, I don't recall uh, versus something yeah. that is maybe indicative of some, a bigger problem. Look, I think it would be easier to, to kind of write this one off if he frankly didn't have a history yeah. of misstatements about the circumstances of Bo Biden's death right. like that have gone on for a while now. I looked yeah. so I looked this up again yeah. and I, this is uncomfortable but he said a couple times in the past at least two or three times he said Bo died in Iraq. We lost our son in Iraq. Yeah. Like the 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 drawn out version of that is they wonder whether um, Bo Biden's exposure to um, burning um, trash pits yeah. in in Iraq for munitions and everything you breathe in the chemicals, um, whether the kind of brain cancer he contracted was connected to that. Right. I, I think it's perfectly fine to say that, to say that 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 you think that could have been a cause. That's perfect. I looked it up. That's a perfectly plausible explanation. But that is different than saying we lost him in Iraq. He died in Iraq. No, he died in Walter Reed Hospital in Maryland. Yeah. Um, so, you know, given all of those things, it starts to be harder to to give him the benefit of the doubt. And, he, and you're right. He has said that multiple times. And look, it's not, I don't think that anyone would or should question the love that Joe Biden had for his son. Of course that's, not. I don't think that's at issue. And I do see a lot of Democrats pushing back saying, well, how dare you question that? I, I don't think yeah. that's what's going on here. I, I do think it is, you know, given how much that obviously meant to him, should we take something from his failure to remember the context or the mm -hmm. circumstances? or the date of his uh, son's death, precisely because it's so meaningful to him. I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I'm increasingly wondering, frankly, if Joe Biden wouldn't have been better off 
having been found guilty of document mismanagement. Yeah. <laughs> he is a shrewd, imagine the her report, this is a shrewd, scheming, calculating man who knew exactly what he was doing. Right, because who cares? I mean, yeah. part of this whole case, remember way back when, when it was actually Trump's, <laughs> Trump who was being investigated in the raid on Mar-a-Lago, and mm -hmm. part of the, the posture of this was, well, how can you be mad at Trump for doing it because Biden did mm -hmm. it too, and Hillary Clinton did it too, and, and that, that was the argument. It, the, no one yes. really cared about Biden doing except for that it was ex exonerating Trump's actions in some way. And then there was a whole discourse about, well, Trump intentionally mis uh, moved yeah. documents from room to room, and so he was doing it with du duplicity, and Biden was just being forgetful. Well, boy, oh boy, has that <laughs> blown up in their face. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Putin declaration, which kind of, yeah. I don't know, surprised me a little bit. How so? Um, uh, well, from the Putin perspective, I mean, if he's being honest that he wants to, you know, end the war with Ukraine but keep the territory they took, Trump has signaled that he's interested in pursuing negotiations to do just that. So why he would prefer Biden, if he actually prefers Biden, does not make sense. Now, maybe it's a, you know, seven-dimensional chest or something where he thinks that saying that he prefers Biden would hurt Biden, even though he really wants Trump. Or maybe he does actually want Biden because he thinks Biden's, uh, you know, a pushover. I mean, uh, some kind of pushover or sure. something, or is is not altogether there and is not, you know, as as capable of of thwarting his plans as Trump. You know, he framed it as Biden being a steady hand and Trump being chaotic. Um, of course, I don't know. That predictable. Our, I mean, it's not. It's yeah. kind of a shade to Biden too, yeah. saying, "Well, Biden's predictable." I mean, maybe he's just easier to predictably bad manipulate. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's he's. Exactly. I, it doesn't. I don't think he was exactly wrapping either candidate in a warm embrace and mm -hmm. demonstrating respect for either. Um, but I do think that, and this is a trend throughout the interview, he doesn't quite fall into what I think the predictable narrative was, either from liberal media, as they were anticipating what was going to happen in this, or from conservative media, as the, they were predicting, I think, a kind of, a sort of a love fest. So not right. only did he say Right, liberal comment, media thinks he's going to say, I want Trump to be president so we can do right. kissy kissy again. Right. Yeah. So not only did he make these remarks uh, about the president's, he also weighed in on how he thought Tucker Carlson performed in the interview. Now, Newsweek has titled this, Putin humiliates Tucker Carlson after uh, interview. You guys can judge for yourself. Apparently, he said, quote, to be honest, I thought that he, Tucker, would behave aggressively and asked so-called sharp questions. I just, I, w I, I was not just prepared for this. I wanted it because it would give me the opportunity to respond in the same way. So basically saying Tucker asked bad questions, they weren't sharp. I didn't have the opportunity to kind of respond in the way vigorously that I would have liked because the questions were so bad. He added that he did not, quote, feel full satisfaction from this interview, um, saying that he ignored almost all of Tucker's questions uh, and barely let him speak yeah. and just said what he wanted to say uh, instead of being responsive. So again, I certainly am not someone who thinks that this interview should not have happened. I certainly don't think you're a traitor or any of the other the liberal absurdities for interviewing Putin. But I did say you have to be prepared. You have to know what you're doing. And you have to not let yourself be used in the context of this interview. And it seems that Putin's impression was that it just did not go very well. He wasn't able, you know, and he seems to be, frankly, using this opportunity to drag Tucker Carlson. Why? I'm not exactly sure, because I, I don't know if Putin appreciates that, for better or for worse, Tucker does, I think, provide a more friendly gloss He won't on shut his up behavior. about how nice the Moscow train station is. Right. Was. Like, he's doing good PR for Russia, for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, but hey, I, I, Putin, KGB, 10 dimensional chest, I'm not going to even pretend to understand it. We're adding it. dimensions to the chest <laughs> as we go. <laughs> Infinitely dimensional but chess. who's playing 19 dimensional chess? That's Donald Trump. Yeah, that's the guy. Of course. More rising right after this. <laughs>